The laying on of the apostles' hands in Acts 6-6 is a critical verse about the Holy Spirit's work. As we have noted, the common non-prophetic ordinary indwelling view of the Holy Spirit relies on Acts 6-6 as the proof text that no person had prophetic abilities other than the apostles before the events of Acts 6-6. Last episode, 155, we established that the laying on of hands has more than one recorded use in the Bible. The non-prophetic personal indwelling view is required to find a discernible method of eliminating every other recorded function of the laying on of hands for this verse to serve as their proof text. Make sure to watch number 155. But the problem is worse. Acts 6.6 6 does provide evidence for eliminating one biblical recorded purpose for the laying on of hands. The eliminated purpose is for the apostles to give the Holy Spirit to other Christians. You see, the ceremony in Acts 6 stands in sharp contrast to the two recorded occurrences of the apostles laying hands, uh, laying on of hands rather, to deliver the Holy Spirit's power to Christians. Let's notice all three passages in succession. Acts 6.6, 6, they, these they set before the apostles and they prayed and laid their hands on them. Acts 8.17, then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Acts 19.6, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began to speak, began speaking in tongues and prophesying. Did you notice what's missing from Acts 6.6? 6? Why is no statement found in Acts 6.6 6 that the seven received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues, or an indication that others could see the Spirit's power in them, as Simon did, as is recorded in Acts 8.18? The answer is simple. Because verse 3 had already told us those seven had the Holy Spirit. What we have then is a phrase, full of the Spirit, which has but one meaning in the Bible. This series has already examined every occurrence of full of the Spirit prior to Acts 6 6. And then a second phrase, laying on of hands, which has multiple meanings. As we have just noted, we have evidence that the second phrase has a particular grammatical usage when connected to the Holy Spirit. Acts 8, 17, Acts 19, 6, the Holy Spirit is mentioned. But importantly, that grammatical evidence indicating that usage is completely missing in Acts 6. Further, we also have a statement of purpose in Acts 6, whom we will appoint to this work. That stated purpose fits another established meaning of the phrase laying on of hands. Sound judgment then demands that we make use of the known allowable usage of laying on of hands, appointing to a service, and also steer clear of crafting a previously unknown meaning to the Bible phrase, full of the Spirit, which before and after this verse is always prophetic because the Spirit's work is always prophetic.